here at Carrie Rhodes here. Welcome back to my craft studio here in Eagle, Idaho. Today is the first day of the March Stamp Set of the Month series. That's my puppy. He's so cute. <laughs> Anyways, today I am bringing you episode one of my March Stamp Set of the Month series featuring the really high five stamp set from Lawn Fawn. Now Lawn Fawn just came out with their brand new collection on February 20th and some really super cute things. So maybe you already have this stamp set, the really high five stamp set, and I'm gonna be bringing you new ideas with this stamp set every Tuesday in the month of March. So make sure that you come back and check those out and hopefully get inspired. All right, so today we are gonna make some interactive cards two different interactive cards, but really with the same layout and using some of the fun new Lawn Fawn things. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, I'm starting out today's cards by making two rainbow cloud backgrounds using the brand new cloudy stencil from Lawn Fawn and some of their inks. This is plastic flamingo that I'm starting with and I am in love with this cloud stencil. It has grid lines on it, which make it really nice for trying to line up a card or keep something straight. It's fabulous. So I'm just using a really light hand, and then when I switch colors, I am rubbing the stencil off and the brush off. I'll come in next with carrot ink, and when I start inking up the um, each line of clouds. I actually will start with the ink and the brush on the stencil and then move my way out. So I'm creating a really soft look. I wanted these to be um, more of a pastel looking background than bright and vibrant. So that's one way you can do that even with these bright inks and also using this makeup style blending brush will give that effect as well. It just puts down a lighter layer of ink versus the traditional style blending tool. So I'm loving this. I've always wanted to make a rainbow cloud background and had yet to do it. So I was super excited about this and I could just make a hundred cards with this background. I adore it. So that right there was sunflower ink. And then for the green, I have celery stick. And we'll do the same exact thing where we start on the stencil and then move our way up and get as close to the upper row of clouds as we can. So there's not too much white showing on each of these. All right, so next I will clean the brush off and here's when I realize I did not set out a blue. So <laughs> I will go and find a blue, which ended up being a mermaid, such a fun color for this really light rainbow of clouds. And we'll go ahead and blend that on as well. Just like that. It's kind of fun doing two cards at once. I couldn't decide when making these cards if I wanted to do a pull tab or a slider card. And so I ended up doing both and thought I'll just make both cards at once. And when you already have all the supplies out, it's so nice to make two or three or multiples of a card because then you have plenty on hand that you can give away. And also sometimes, I'm pretty sure this doesn't happen to you like it happens to me, but sometimes it's hard to let go of some of your cards. Do you ever have that problem <laughs> where it's so cute, you just need to like set it out and look at it for a while and then you can give it away? Well, if you make more than one, you have one you can give away immediately, right? <laughs> All right, so here I'm taking the Liquid Stardust by Lawn Fawn and using a paintbrush to splatter some sparkle and shimmer all over these clouds, which I find to be super fun for a rainbow and also a birthday card like I'm creating here. So I use some Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink to stamp out these images twice. So I have the same images for each card and then I additionally stamped two extra presents for each card. I am using some Copic markers to color these and the markers, once I zoomed in so you could see the coloring better, the caps don't always show on the screen. So I will make sure at the end of the coloring you can see all the markers I used to color today. Um, shades of the E11, 13, 15 for the bunny, and then I have warm grays for the mouse and just some bright colors for the present. It's really simple Copic coloring with um, 
two or three colors on the animals and then one color blends on the rest of the things. So just really super easy and lawn fawn images sometimes can be small. So I find that pretty easy to do some simple coloring where with larger images, you would really wanna make sure you had that um, blend going on. So with the smaller ones, it's kind of easy to get away with using less colors. All right, so I will finish coloring all of these images. I'm only gonna show you this one set because I colored the other ones with the exact same colors. I might have uh, switched up the presents and the hats a little bit, but the same exact markers. And just like I said, really simple coloring. So no like super awesome techniques to learn here on this video, but you know, just know that you can use your Copic markers to do some simple coloring and it still looks fabulous. All right, so we'll finish off that birthday hat and then I'm gonna bring in my dies. Oh, right here, if you want to go ahead and pause, you can get a look at all those colors. But I'm gonna bring in the die set. I haven't opened it. I thought I would show you how I like to store them. So I take it all apart and then I use that cardboard backing that comes with the die and I adhere a piece of magnet sheet. This is actually dryer, no, not dryer, heat vent covers from the uh, hardware store. And uh, my husband usually picks them up for me whenever he goes, I say, can you get me some more magnets? And so he brings these home. They cut really easily because they're lightweight. And I just cut it to size to fit on that little cardboard backing. It has the name of the set at the bottom. So I try not to cover that up. And then I'm gonna snip all these apart with my wire snippers or yeah, I, they're probably not called wire snippers, but anyway, mine are broken and I find that they still work, but see here I'm bending, using them to bend instead of snip those little edge pieces off. It's fabulous. So much easier than snipping them and then flying across the room. So there's all my die cut pieces I'm gonna save. I've come back to my now dry background and I'm using the little confetti stamp from that same stamp set and stamping the same color of ink that I sponged with that confetti right over the top, just to add to that party kind of look. And you know, there, we have the sparkle in the background that's splattered, and so this just adds to that party kind of feel. So I do the same color on all the clouds, stamping it once on each side. Um, and I love that this adds to the rainbow feel of this card and just gives it a little bit more dimension. So we'll do the blue and then I didn't notice until I was editing this video that when I got to the purple, I only stamped it one time on this right hand panel. Totally skipped it. I'm gonna have to go back and do it later. So here's the pull tab die set and the slide on over die set. We're gonna do the pull tab card first. So here I am with the um, die that rests at the top of your paper and cuts out a notch. I'm gonna use that and my grid on my glass mat to mark where I want the little opening in the card to be. And I realized I needed some of my other pieces for this card before I cut it to kind of make sure I knew where it was gonna go. So I used the grassy border and die cut a piece of grass and brought in my little trampoline so I could figure out how high or low I wanted this opening to go. Once I had it straight, then I went ahead and die cut that. And before assembling it all, I wanted my grass to be adhered to my card. And I knew that I wanted to stamp happy birthday at the bottom of the grass with clear pigment ink and emboss it with white powder. So I went ahead and did that for both of the pieces of grass. So I have that for both of my cards and heat set them. Now we can kind of assemble these things and figure out where everything's going to go. So I'll glue that grass on so the happy birthday is centered and just trim off those edges so it's flush with each side. And then we'll go ahead and put that little trampoline on right above the word, words happy birthday and use some foam squares so it's popped up. Now with this piece right here that comes with the pull tab, you wanna bend those scored lines at the bottom back and forth for kind of a Z type fold and then put those tabs through your opening. And this is where you're going to adhere the piece that you want to move up and down. Now, this is a little bit big for my bunny. So I just laid the bunny out, trimmed some off. I would put the bunny back on, trim off some more, just to make sure that I was not going to be able to see that uh, piece when my bunny was stuck to it. So there you have it, trimmed down. So the bunny will cover the whole thing. 
but I wanted the mouse to move up and down too. So I brought in a piece of clear view sheet and cut a little strip. I'm gonna use this clear strip to attach the bunny and the mouse to one another. So when the bunny is attached to the pull tab, it's going to create um, movement for the mouse as well because they are attached. So once I figure out where that goes on the bunny, then I'm gonna start adhering all the things together. So the mouse gets a little double stick tape on the back and I'll stick that to that clear view sheet, trim off the excess, and then I will attach the bunny to that pull tab with some more double stick tape. Just like that. So I really love this, this idea of attaching the two pieces with a clear view sheet extends the use of your pull tab. And there's so many other creative ways that you could use this idea. So now we want to stamp on this before I do any more uh, layering of pieces. So I have the um, two little sentiments from this set that say we and yay. And then there's these little marks that kind of create the look of movement. So I'm stamping all of those down with some gray ink. The next step is to use this little die cut piece from the pull tab set to stabilize our pull tab bar. So I'm putting adhesive on the back middle panel and I'm going to adhere that to the card base so that it is going to wrap around the pull tab and right below that notch that we cut in the card front. Then we're gonna put adhesive only on the smaller flap. You're gonna wrap this around so that you've created a channel that's going to stabilize that pull tab so it doesn't move side to side. With the pull tab mechanism all the way down, you're gonna cut off the excess and then add this other die cut piece to create an arrow so people know where to grab and pull. You wanna adhere this to your card with foam tape all the way around but not touching the pull tab. And that is gonna help so that people can reach in and grab that pull tab and move it up and down easily. All right, so next I'm adding in some of those cute colored and die cut images like the party hats and the presents. And I thought the mouse would look so cute with his party hat kind of flying off of his head. So that's what I did there. And then the bunny will get a party hat as well. The little presents I'm gonna put around the little trampoline with some foam squares. By the way, who doesn't need a trampoline stamp? That's so much fun, I love it. All right, so that completes the pull tab card. Next, we're going to move on to the slider card. So it's the same exact layout, but I'm using the smallest straight piece from the slide on over die set, and I'm gonna use that mechanism so that the bunny and the mouse move up and down on this card. So I'm saving that die cut piece and going to use it on the background so I have a seamless look from the front. And to get everything aligned, I am gonna go ahead and glue on the grass with the stamped happy birthday, just as I did on the first card. And this just helps me line things up and figure out placement. Next, I'm using the same slide on over die to die cut a piece of fun foam. I need to trim just a sliver off the side and I decided I would try mounting this a little bit different. Normally the penny will get mounted to the back of your card this time I'm gonna put it on the front. I just wanted to play with it and see if this might help the slider mechanism slide more smoothly. Um, and a little teaser here, it doesn't matter. If you put your penny on the front or if you put your penny on the back, it slides the same. So now we know. But I had to give it a go. It was a little idea in my head. So same thing here. You're going to want to mount this to your card with some foam tape, but do not get it too close to that opening or too close to the penny, especially if you put the penny on the back side of the card. Now, in order to create a, a stopper here so that the penny doesn't fall out, I put some foam tape on the back of that fun foam or some double stick tape, and then a little scrap of cardstock so that can't fall out. And then we'll mount that to our card and you can see that that extra die cut piece I inlaid is making this background very seamless so there's not a big yellow opening there. Yeah, super cool. All right, so the trampoline goes on with foam squares. I ended up scooting the trampoline over a little bit to the right so there was more room for the mouse. 
and I'm gonna do the same exact thing, attach the two little critters together with that clear view strip so that both of them will now slide up and down on this card. I'm gonna mount the mouse to the foam or the clear view strip with a foam square so that there's a little bit of height difference between the mouse and the bunny. And I just like the kind of 3D effect that adds to the card. So back in with the party hats, and then I realized, oh, I did not stamp my extra images. So I'll bring those back in and go for it and try to stamp these, even though the card's mounted. And thank goodness it came out okay, but I recommend doing this before you mount everything down with foam tape. Yeah, but see, it worked out okay. All right, so then the presents go on with foam squares and that completes this slider card. I would love to know which of these two cards you like best, and I hope that I've inspired you to play around with the dies that you have, the interactive dies, and maybe try adding a clear strip to make them um, do something extra like we did today. So I will be back again next Tuesday with new ideas with the really high five stamp set from Lawn Fun. So I hope you'll tune back in. I also will have some other videos throughout the week. So if you're new here, feel free to subscribe and you can ring the little bell and YouTube will let you know next time I upload a video. Everything I used is listed and linked for you below. So you can check that out and I will be back again to stamp with you very soon. Happy stamping. Bye.